Luke chapter 1 verse 34 through 38. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived the Son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. The angel Gabriel speaks of the mystery of Christ's incarnation in a reverent and discreet manner. Verse 35. We shall do well to follow this example in all our reflections on this deep subject, regarding it with holy reverence and abstaining from speculations. Scripture reveals the truth. John chapter 1 verse 14, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5, chapter 2 verse 14, Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. And there we must stop, not prying beyond this point. In a religion that comes down from heaven, there must needs be mysteries. The angel Gabriel lays down a mighty principle to silence all objections about the Incarnation, verse 37. A hearty reception of this great principle is of immense importance to our own inward peace. Among many antidotes to a doubting, questioning state of mind, few will be found more useful than that before us now, a thorough conviction of the almighty power of God. Faith never rests so calmly and peacefully as when it lays its head on the pillow of God's omnipotence. The Virgin Mary gives meek and ready acquiescence to God's revealed will concerning her. Verse 38. There is far more of admirable grace in this answer than at first appears. A moment's reflection will show us that it was no light matter to become the mother of our Lord in this unheard of and mysterious way. It brought with it, no doubt, at a distant period, great honor, but it brought with it, for the present, no small danger to Mary's reputation and no small trial to Mary's faith. But she asks no further questions, she raises no further objections, she accepts the honor laid upon her with all its attendant perils and inconveniences. Let us seek, in our daily practical Christianity, to exercise the same blessed spirit of faith. Let us be willing to go anywhere, and do anything, and be anything, whatever be the present inconvenience, so long as God's will is clear and the path of duty is plain. For Meditation It is an easy thing within the context of a highly emotional, pressurized meeting to promise to go anywhere, at any time, at any cost. It is entirely another thing to put the vow into practice in the real world.